Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What time is it, Hartley? Just a little before eight. Already? I wonder where Claudia and David could be. Oh, they'll be here any minute. Mm. Dinner parties should start late, but too late gets merely disorganized and ill-tempered. Oh, come now. Everybody's having a fine time. Has Victor Carrington found himself somebody to spend the evening with? He's over there in the corner with Nancy Riddle. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't seem to be enjoying it too much. Really, you know, it's very difficult entertaining somebody from out of town. Such trouble finding the right person for him. Carrington's got along perfectly well by himself all these years. He's managed to amass quite a sizable fortune. But he hasn't, as you put it, amassed himself a wife. Oh, here he comes. No, Victor. I understand that that department store of yours has just about tripled in the past two years. Mm, strange enough, that's the honest truth. As a matter of fact, I think it could handle several times more business if the shipping and traffic problem in Chicago could be cleared up. A good architect could really do something to simplify American commerce. A good architect? Why, Victor, do you know that uh, Hartley's brother, David, is an architect? Why, well, Hartley didn't even know you had a brother. <laughs> well, he's a good deal younger than I am. As a matter of fact, his wife, Claudia, is on your right. Oh, she's not here yet. She must be very beautiful if she can afford to arrive at one of your dinners so late. She is, in a way. And very sweet. She's probably the most naive young bride I've met in years. They don't come like her very often these days. Mm, you make a sound like a fresh spring wind. <laughs> That's a fairly accurate summing up. I haven't met a fresh spring wind in years. I'm not so sure I'd know what to do with one. The answer is do nothing. Claudia's very young. So young that it makes me almost a little uncomfortable at times. My dear Julia, nothing could ever make you look the least bit uncomfortable. I see you about once in every ten years, and you... Oh, Julia, who's that at the door now? Why, I... A very beautiful woman. I thought the only people who hadn't arrived yet were Claudia and David. Did you invite anybody else, my dear? Whoever she is, she's a delight. Why, I can't believe my eyes. Hartley, that is Claudia. It can't. But it is. You're right. It is Claudia. <laughs> oh, Julia, so this is supposed to be the naive young thing. You certainly had me fooled. Why, she's a honey. And no fresh spring wind either. Claudia, my lamb, you've come. Julia, I'm so sorry I'm late, but everything happened. And then David phoned from the office. He couldn't even get home to dress. He's coming straight from Connecticut. Never mind David. How about David's brother? Do I rate a kiss? Why, of course, Hartley. Hello, I'm sorry I'm late, but I... I'm... Perfectly all right, my sweet. It must have taken you quite a while to dress. As a matter of fact, it did. You see, this afternoon I was cooking a custard... You look stunning. And I want no explanations or apologies. You look stunning. Don't misunderstand me, my dear, but, but you don't always look like this. But this isn't me. Hmm? Not you. Heavens, I don't go around looking like this. But the stove blew up in my face, and everything you see now is Pierre's. He had to start from the beginning. Eyebrows, eyelashes, hair. I think I look awful. Awfully dangerous. David would be furious. Because a stove can be awfully dangerous. <laughs> you won't tell him, will you, Julia? <laughs> I promise. Maybe I ought to try cooking a custard sometime. I don't even dare sneeze. I'd come all apart. <laughs> then don't sneeze. You look much too glamorous. Do you think David will think so? Every man will think so. Uh, <clears throat> Julia, aren't you going to introduce me? You see? It's starting already. No, Claudia, my dear, this is Mr. Victor Carrington from Chicago. Victor, this is my brother's wife, Mrs. David Norton. This is a real pleasure, Mrs. Norton, and a most exciting surprise. Hello. I'm very glad to meet you. Your sister-in-law, Mrs. Norton, tried to describe you to me, but she didn't do you justice. I really didn't know what I was saying. Well, you see, I... Mrs. I... Norton, how would you like some of Julia's very unique canopies? Oh, I love them. Well, I shall take it upon myself to keep you well supplied. How oh, nice of you. I like the caviar ones especially, don't you? 
But it's a shame you're always so small. Oh, there they are, right over there. Let's go over and get some. Oh, Les. Well, Hartley, what do you make of that? The way Claudia looks. She looks very stunning. You said so yourself. That story about the stove. Why, she's clever from head to toe. I mean, her whole get-up is clever. That white dress and no jewelry, for instance. And look at that makeup. And her hair. I'm looking, my dear. Oh, here comes David now. Hi there, Julia. How are you? I'm just catching my breath. Oh, anything wrong? Oh, no, I should say not. Nothing could be righter. Glad to hear it. How are you, Hartley? Oh, I'm fine, David. Oh, now, let me get you something. Oh, Julia, I'm sorry to be late. Is Claudia here yet? I hope you don't mind that I couldn't get home to dress. Claudia's done all the dressing for the family, it would seem. Yes, she said she'd dress. Where is she? I haven't seen her since this morning. She's right over there, surrounded by Victor Carrington, Lord Radcliffe. Now, Hartley seems to have been drawn in. Where? I, I don't see her. She's the girl in white, David. Oh, no, Julia, that... That's oh, not... yes, it is. Claudia? Holy smoke! Shall we go to the other room, or would the gentleman prefer to stay in here for a brandy? Oh, Julia, you're not going to break up my evening like that. I'm going to have my brandy in the other room with the ladies. You mean with the lady. Just as you wish, Victor. We'll all go into the other room, then. David. David. Hello, darling. Having a nice time. Not half as bad as I thought it would be. What's the matter? You haven't said one word to me all evening. I don't notice that you've been very lonesome. I've been dying of lonesomeness. I've had a wonderful time. You hardly looked at me once during dinner. That's only because I hardly dared turn my head around. Afraid it would fall off. Exactly. Does it look as if it will? It looks pretty heavy. Well, have fun. David, what's the matter? Oh, here you are, my dear. I thought I'd lost you. Ah, let's sit down here. It's a nice, quiet corner. Very good-looking man, your husband. David's always especially good-looking when he's angry. And uh, is he angry now? I should say. Do you see how that little muscle in his jaw was working? That's when he's angry. <laughs> I guess it's because Julia's been after him all evening to redo Mrs. Carmichael's house. Well, lots of young architects would jump at the chance. No, not David. He's not interested in houses and architecture like that. What is he interested in, besides you? Right now, he's especially interested in some kind of freight terminal he's worked out. Seems to me I read something about that in a trade publication not long ago. That's right, that's it. David had an article about it, about... Uh, Five months ago. Oh. So your David is the originator of that freight terminal idea. Yes. Just the sort of thing I was telling Julia a little earlier that I could use. Make running my business a lot easier. Is David going ahead with it? He'd like to, but I I'm afraid I don't know very much about it. Strange. I just never put that article and your husband together. Uh, look, darling, it's been a very long day and I'm pretty tired. Do you... Mind coming home? Mind? I'd love to. I, I don't mean I'm not having a lovely time with you, Mr. Carrington. Well, as a matter of fact, I have to be getting along, too. When you come to New York a few days, you find it pretty exhausting. Which way are you going? My car's outside. I'll give you a lift. Well, we're home. Aren't you going to say something? What do you want me to say? David, your jawbone is so square. Are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad at you. It was a nice party, wasn't it? I'm glad you had a good time. Didn't you have a good time? Didn't you think Mr. Carrington was nice? Entrancing. We talked about you most of the time. He must have loved that. He seemed very interested. Oh, he did, did he? He thought you were very handsome. Oh, he did, did he? But let me tell you. Carrington wasn't interested in me. He was interested in you. He didn't think I was handsome. He thought you were beautiful. You think so? And I'll knock his block off. Oh, don't be silly. Victor Carrington is just a nice, sweet man from Chicago. Yeah, I know where he's from. Everybody's heard of Victor Carrington. A nice, sweet man in my eye. Now, look here, Claudia. What's the idea of pulling that stunt tonight? Pulling what stunt? Now, don't play innocent. You mean the way I look? What in blazes do you think I mean. It's just my usual white dress. 
It's the other one I didn't wear on my honeymoon. Well, it's not your usual white face. What were you doing? Play acting? Trying to see if you could look like a big girl? I don't think I care for that remark. I did look like a big girl, though, didn't I? At least Mr. Carrington thought so, I think. You made a great hit with everybody but your husband. You had Julia positively groggy from the show you put on. For a while, you had you had Hartley forgetting his gallbladder. And as for Mr. Carrington, I don't think he'll ever go back to Chicago. Oh, David, did I really? Really, but I don't like it. You ever go out looking like that again, Claudia, I'll wring your neck. I'll just have to stay home until I grow again. What do you mean, till you grow again? David, this isn't me. It's Pierre's. You know, Pierre Antoine. What? You, who in blazes is Pierre? You know, the hairdresser. Well, what on earth did you go to him for? Your hair was all right, perfectly all right, just the way it was. Yes, darling, the way it was, but not the way it is. Uh, what do you mean? David, now calm down. The stove blew up this afternoon. What? You know, when I was making the custard for Bertha's sister with the, with the sprained knee, you know? I told you about it this morning. Oh, what about the stove? It blew up, and I blew up with it. I lost my hair, my eyebrows, everything. You little fool. You 17 different kinds of confounded idiot. Why, you know, you could have killed yourself. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten, Claudia, that you are going to be a mother? Oh, I knew you'd yell, David. Oh, David, please put out the light. Now, why on earth should I put out the light? I'm, I'm, I'm not through yelling. That's why. If you don't yell in the dark... I have a headache, and I want to take my hair off and my eyelashes off and everything that belongs to Pierre and doesn't belong to me off. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Take them off. I look too terrible without them. You won't love me anymore. Well, go try it and see. Very well. Here comes the eyelashes. The eyebrows. The hair. You're a... You're a little bald. I knew you'd feel that way when you saw me. Now you won't love me anymore. No? Is that so? Darling, here comes your lipstick off. Oh, dear. David, I just love it when you kiss me like that. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Do the kids in your house have to coax when they want a party? You don't need to go to a lot of expense and trouble to give them a good time. Just order a case of Coke, and they'll do the rest. As long as there's Coca-Cola in the refrigerator, young folks seem to figure there's festivity in the air. And in that respect, they're not much different from older folks, when you come to think about it. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. <laughs>